talk about CO2 transport and in the old book uh, carbon dioxide transport is on 272 and the new book on 291 and just reading out of the book here it says that uh, at rest metabolizing tissue cells consume about 250 milliliters of oxygen we had talked about oxygen consumption and VO2 is oxygen consumption and VO2 is equal to 250 milliliters per minute and they produce about 200 milliliters of carbon dioxide each minute so the CO the VCO2 or CO2 production is about 200 milliliters per minute uh, so as cells are producing CO2 the CO2 has to be carried out from the cells to the lungs and beyond and so forth so we're going to talk about carbon dioxide transport and CO2 transport and this is really a, a really excellent book to talk about a difficult subject um, this really says in the plasma there are certain ways that CO2 is carried and the, there's an illustration that depicts this and we'll talk about that and in, this is the illustration that I'm talking about. Now here it's really hard to see it. So this is on page uh, 293 of the new book, 273 of the old book. But uh, this is essentially the, the primary thing you're going to need to know about for CO2 transport. So this is showing the sale and this, the fact that CO2 is produced as a product of cellular metabolism. Remember if you're looking at the Krebs cycle, uh, a simplified version of the Krebs cycle in, in which oxygen is being utilized in the cell, we would say uh, oxygen combines with glucose to make adenosine triphosphate or ATP and then the, the uh, byproduct or waste product produced from that is uh, heat plus CO2. So I'll say that again, that the, in the Krebs cycle you're talking about oxygen combining with glucose to make cell energy, which is ATP, and then the uh, byproduct being um, both heat and CO2 production. So the cells, this is depicting the cell producing CO2 as a waste product. Now the body has to get rid of CO2 because CO2 is, will become toxic, CO2 is an acidic property. It will cause the blood to be more acidic if it's kept in the bloodstream. So CO2 is produced, it comes out. Now it says that there are varying ways that the CO2 is going to be transported. Here are the three ways in the plasma, here are two ways in the, in the red blood cell, but the primary way that we're going to talk about and that we want to focus on is the 63% of the CO2 being carried in the way that we're going to describe now. So CO2 combines with water to make carbonic acid. Now that process is speeded up by something called carbonic anhydrase, which is an enzyme that speeds up the process of changing over. But that's an important thing to remember that CO2 combines with water to make carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is uh, formed in the red blood cell and eventually you're going to take away a hydrogen ion and that's where you see the, the H plus be lifted there. Um, and once you take away the hydrogen ion you basically have bicarbonate. And sodium bicarb um, is what you see down here with NaHCO3. But right here is bicarbonate. So what I need for you to realize is that a large majority of CO2 is carried in the bloodstream in the form of bicarb. So that would be a test question and that would be just important information to realize. So the chemical basically transformation of CO2 to bicarb occurs then it's going to be transported to the lungs and that's going to be reversed. Now when I get down to this point right here, it's saying that you basically have a 20 to 1 ratio of bicarb to carbonic acid and 20 bicarbs for every one acid. And that, that's 
picture in that picture, sodium bicarb is 20, carbonic acid is one. So point being is that if you want to have, if there's going to be a normal pH of the blood and if there's going to be both balance and acid, if there's going to be acid-base balance, this factor has to show a 20 to 1 ratio, 20 bicarbs for every one acid. Now, if there was only 10 bicarbs for every one acid, that would be more acidity. And if there were 30 bicarbs for every one acid, that would be more alkalinity. So just realize that the relationship needs to be 20 bicarbs for every one acid. 20 sodium bicarbonates for every one carbonic acid is the relationship needed there. The other ways that CO2 transport is transported in the bloodstream, I'm not really interested in, you know, you just realize that there are other ways, but it's not really something that I'm going to be asking you about. So that's the primary thing. That's the primary, uh, you know, topic and thing that you need to be focusing on. Now, this is talking about in the red blood cell, in the way of, uh, in the red blood cell, CO2 is transfer, uh, transported in the form of bicarbonate. It says 63% of it is transported, so a large majority of CO2 is transported in the form of bicarb. Very important. All right, now let's, let's take the journey here and let's say, okay, CO2 is transported. Well, it's in the body cells, comes out of the body cells and into the bloodstream. It's transported both in the plasma and the red blood cell. 63% of it's transported in the way of bicarb. So now it's, it's transformed in the, at that point from, you know, that's where CO2 combines with water to make carbonic acid and then eventually bicarbonate. There it is, it's transported, transformed into a, a way that it can be carried. Now it's going to get to the lungs, arrive at the lungs, and this, is, this picture is also in your book. So think about this picture, and this picture is on uh, 295 in the new book and 275 in the old book. But uh, now remember that we have, we have basically bicarb, right? That's going to, notice the arrows are going backward and we're going this direction. Bicarb is going to become carbonic acid, then it's going to become be separated into water and CO2 and eventually become CO2 and be eliminated from the bloodstream, basically diffuse from the bloodstream back out into the alveoli to be exhaled. Now, so there is a certain amount of CO2 in the blood that's regulated this way by getting rid of CO2 out of the bloodstream. Remember that if we wanted to assess a patient's ability to ventilate their lungs, ventilation is all about knowing the CO2 level and if the CO2 level in the blood, in the arterial blood, is between 35 and 45, that's PaCO2. Between 35 and 45, that would indicate that the patient's able to exhale the CO2 normally and that's, that's uh, the main point. So it gets out into the alveolus, diffuses out of the bloodstream into the alveoli, and then you exhale it. Now when you exhale CO2, we should be able to measure that on a capnogram, uh, call it capnography if you would. And if it's in a partial pressure, it should be very similar to arterial CO2, with maybe just a few numbers less than arterial. So. If you wanted to say somewhere like 30 to 35 to 40, somewhere in there, that would be the normal uh, exhaled CO2, and that's in a partial pressure, so we might call that PET CO2 normal. And then in a percentage, that's going to be around 5% exhaled CO2. So that's the CO2 exhaled. Gets out into it diffuses from the bloodstream into the alveolus, into the alveolus, and then is exhaled, and uh, that's how we assess ventilation and whether or not the patient's able to ventilate and remove CO2 out of their lungs and and uh, out of their bloodstream, and that's very important. If CO2 builds up, like I said before, it's toxic. It's 
going to cause acidosis, and we're going to, that's our next topic that we're going to arrive at, is uh, uh, how CO2 causes acidosis. Now, in your book, it gives you a little bit of a summary of uh, CO2 transport. There's not a whole lot about this, y'all. We would say that CO2 is eliminated from the lungs. You should read about that. There's, um, you don't really have to know about the Haldane effect or uh, any of those things. I mean, it's really, you know, deeper than we we're going to need to go. So, if I was going to recap, I would say that um, in the red blood cell, in uh, that 63% uh, of CO2 transported is in the form of bicarbonate and you don't have to really know any of this, uh, other than to say that CO2 exhaled and the amount of CO2 produced by the cells normally is around 200 milliliters per minute. And we would call that, we would give that the symbol of VCO2, or CO2 production. And the normal CO2 production is about 200 milliliters of CO2 per minute produced by the cells. So if we back, so let's back up and let's uh, kind of summarize what we've said here. I'm going to back up just a little. Here's the, here's what we've said that in terms of transporting, CO2 comes from the cell into the bloodstream, into the red blood cells. 63% of it, it becomes bicarbonate, forms a bicarbonate ratio of, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, uh, bicarb to carbonic acid ratio of 20 to 1, that would be what we want to see. And then once it's transported to the lungs, that uh, whole process is reversed and the bicarb goes back through the chemical equation and uh, um, turns back into CO2 and then it's diffused out of the bloodstream and, and exhaled by the lungs. It's a lot to take in, I realize, just like uh, some of the other videos, and I appreciate your attention. I'm glad we can uh, do this, and maybe you can watch the videos over and over, and, and that might help with your understanding of it. If you have any questions, just email me, or uh, uh, we'll talk in class, and uh, I'm expecting that you'll come to class with some questions. So thanks for that, and I will talk to you next time.